Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, coming to you live from a closet. <laughs> we got, we're trying to solve some uh, UV alarms that we're getting from a UV Max Pro 10 unit. Although this does apply to um, Viqua systems in general, but uh, but basically you can see on the UV control panel we're getting a red light flashing at the clarity sensor indicating that there's something wrong uh, generally that we're getting turbid water or water that isn't completely um, clarified enough for the UV light to penetrate it uh, so we need to we need to try to clear out this alarm um, usually the alarm if, if you see a flashing red or a solid red you'll get an audible alarm which uh, of course will want to clear out uh, stop that annoying beep by pressing the alarm off button here on the control panel. Again, this is a UV Max Pro 10 series. Um, but because we're trying to clear out this alarm, we're going to do a few things to get started um, and get working on this uh, UV system. First thing we're going to do is unplug the unit and let it cool down for a couple minutes. Uh, this is very important because that UV light will be hot and in fact even though this unit has a cooling fan, if you touch it, it's it's warm to the touch. So we want to let that cool down for a couple minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to, uh, in this case, we have a uh, two filters, two sediment filters down at the bottom here. And I apologize for the awful camera work, but yeah, we are in a closet again, so it's pretty close quarters. We're going to isolate the water supply. We're going to shut off the water supply uh, so that we don't get any pressurized water from the cistern feeding the UV unit from now on um, while we work on the system. So I closed this valve here. This is uh, downstream from the UV system. So we have cistern sending water to a 20 micron filter, then a 5 micron filter, then the UV sterilizer. So we're going to cut off that water supply. Now we don't have any water from the pump feeding the system. We're going to go out to a a sink or some fixture nearby, open it up, drain out that water pressure so that ultimately we want our pressure gauge to read zero PSI, just like it does now. That means that we drain out all the pressure in the system. Uh, so we have zero PSI in the system and we're going to close the second isolation valve. This one's upstream from the UV unit. Um, that will uh, cut off, it will completely isolate the UV system so there's no pressurized water feeding it. At that point, we're going to uh, drain out the water uh, that's in the UV chamber here. And the best way to do that is to find a nearby filter housing. In this case, we have a 20 micron filter right here. We're going to open this filter housing up, let the water pour out into a bucket. Uh, now you can see I removed the filter housing from the uh, from the bracket mount here, um, and again I let that water drain into the bucket. That will relieve pressure from this UV chamber. It'll flow back into the, into this bucket, um, so we'll have less water when we deconstruct the UV system pour out of the bottom of the chamber. Um, one thing to note, it's very important that when you remove a filter housing like this, you want to make sure that that o-ring inside the filter housing, you can barely see it there, that black o-ring, you want to make sure that that remains intact. A lot of times when you remove the filter housing, that o-ring will either stick to the, to the uh, uh, mount here or uh, it will fall in your bucket and um, if you go to replace the filter housing without that o-ring, it will leak. So you want to make sure to, to have that o-ring, make sure it's in, seated in there properly, and maybe even have one on hand uh, just in case it, it cracks during removal. We've allowed the chamber to cool for a few minutes by unplugging the unit. Now we're going to remove the uh, clarity sensor here and the quartz sleeve, the, the glass tube that encases the lamp from the uh, in the UV chamber here and to do that we'll need a Phillips head screwdriver and the uh, quartz sleeve removal tool that comes with the uh, UV Max Pro 10 unit. First thing we're going to do is remove this retaining ring on top of the unit by flipping it upright and then disconnecting the power supply 
uh, from the UV lamp by pulling that out and disconnecting the power. Now next we'll put on some gloves and remove this lamp and set it in a safe location nearby. Okay, so I put on a vinyl glove. Um, I'm going to use this to pick the lamp out of the unit. It unthreads by turning slightly to the left and you can hold the UV lamp by the ceramic portion. Pull it straight out. Now we have the lamp removed. We're going to set this in a, in a safe area. Next, we're going to unthread this top portion, the black plastic portion, by turning it slightly. Pulling it out. We'll set this aside. And now, on the bottom portion, we're going to make sure that we have a bucket placed on the bottom below the unit because undoubtedly there will be residual water that's trapped in this chamber. Uh, so with a bucket underneath, we're going to remove the bottom screw that retains this plastic portion. We're going to remove that screw with a Phillips head screwdriver. Place the screw in a safe location. And now remove the black uh, plastic retaining uh, retaining bottom from the UV chamber by unthreading it slightly and placing it in a safe location. Now we take this uh, quart sleeve removal tool that comes with the UV unit. This we're going to place on the bottom of the chamber and use it to push up gently on the quart sleeve and that will uh, free up the two O-rings that are on either side, either end of this quart sleeve. Um, without, it will do it without cracking the unit, but you want to make sure to have a glove on. Now it does take a, uh, a little bit of uh, work to use this tool to, to try to pry that quart sleeve up. Um, if you're having difficulty, uh, you can, again, just place it on the bottom here. It will line up with the sleeve. You'll push up on it. If it's not going up and not freeing up the O-rings, you can also put it on top, push down on it, and keep doing that back and forth uh, until you free up the O-ring. Occasionally, the O-ring will be so tightly fit on there um, because there is water that's acting as a, as a giving it a suction effect and, and really holding that O-ring in place. If that's the case, um, you may have to just use a a thin piece of plastic to try to just gently work under there to pry that o-ring off of the quart sleeve so that that water breaks free and drains out. Um, it's a good idea to have an extra quart sleeve on hand when you're doing this in case something does happen and in the process it can be a very delicate process in the process it, it cracks the cord sleeve so it's a good idea to have a cord sleeve on hand so you don't have to go without water okay so now the cord sleeve is free freed up in the chamber and the reason we know that is one of the o-rings the bottom o-ring popped out all the remaining water came out so we're going to remove this uh, cord sleeve now again making sure that we have gloves on and we're just going to gently pull this glass sleeve straight out. And we see here, this is the reason we have an alarm. Uh, this is a new installation of a concrete cistern, and this is uh, a buildup that results from new concrete uh, being used uh, in a rain cistern that rainwater because it's acidic will have an etching effect on the concrete walls of new concrete it, it, it dissipates over time but on new concrete um, this will this will be the result it will it will etch the walls of the cistern and that um, the concrete uh, calcium buildup will will translate onto the quartz sleeve. So what we need to do is use some CLR, um, calcium lime rust remover. We're going to wipe this down with a clean cloth and clean this sleeve and then remove this clarity sensor with a wrench 
back it out, and clean the end of that clarity sensor also with CLR. Soak it for a few minutes directly in CLR and wipe it down with a clean dry cloth and we'll put it back together.